Sean Arthur was a college wrestling champ whose true passions were football and family. Bob, tell me about Sean. Uh, Sean kind of struggled in school, uh, doing his school work, but he worked extra hard uh, to succeed. Sean was an individual that always had a, a great smile. Sean never missed a card at Christmas time or Mother's Day, uh, you know, cards. I mean, just never did. When Sean was offered a temp assignment on a flood project in the New Orleans area, he dived right in. He also fell head over heels in love with the local woman and got engaged. Sadly, it didn't last long, and a broken-hearted Sean moved into this gated apartment complex in Metairie. They were engaged. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Did you have reservations about the engagement? No. No. I mean, we taught our boys right from wrong, and, uh, you know, it was up, or any decisions they made about life is up to them. Sean's father, Bob, says after the breakup, Sean had no reason to stay in New Orleans and planned to return home to Kansas City. But first, he had to finish his job. Sean was working uh, way over a hundred and some hours every two weeks. And uh, he, uh, he had told his mother he was thrilled because he was going to have his first weekend off in a long, long time. It was Friday night and Sean told his dad he was looking forward to having a little fun. Tragically, it was the last time Bob would ever talk to his son. When did you realize that something was wrong? Sean is very punctual. I had made arrangements uh, for Sean to speak with an attorney uh, the morning, the Saturday morning, uh, to see about getting out of his lease. He said that he would call around 10.30 in the morning. That call never came. Bob says he burned up the cell towers calling Sean's phone. Finally, someone answered, and it wasn't Sean. The guy said that he found Sean's phone uh, in one of the local cemeteries. And based on that phone call, I called the sheriff's department and asked him to do a wellness check. A Jefferson Parish Sheriff's deputy finds Sean's door unlocked. According to the deputy's report, he sees Sean's dead body naked from the waist down, lying on this air mattress with no visible signs of trauma. On the floor, there's a shot glass, an empty beer bottle, and an empty capsule casing. More bottles in the trash and white powder on a table. In the bathroom, he photographs an empty whiskey bottle and takes it to the lab for analysis. The deputy says the circumstances he observed appeared to be unusual because the kitchen cabinets were open and there was minimal furniture in the apartment. He also couldn't find Sean's wallet, two cell phones, and his truck, so he called in the homicide detectives. They conducted a thorough investigation, including getting the phone companies to ping Sean's cell phone. Bob then gets the phone call that would shatter his life forever. How did that hit you, that phone call? You know, how would it hit anyone? It was tough, but anyhow, we did what we had to do. Now Bob, a retired insurance investigator, heads to Louisiana with his wife, Linda. He snaps his own pictures inside Sean's apartment, and it appears to be ransacked. He finds even more empty capsules and a spot of blood on the molding. Bob and Linda meet Jefferson Parish Sheriff's detectives and learn the shocking details. Just right off the bat, uh, they indicated that Sean was having a party, a large party. Uh, a, lot, a lot of alcohol uh, was uh, apparent uh, and that drugs uh, were apparent. And of course, we immediately said, no, nah, this can't be, uh, that's not our son. That wasn't like him? To no. be consuming copious amounts of alcohol or using no. drugs? No, Sean uh, was definitely not a heavy drinker. And Sean definitely was not a drug user, did not use drugs, period. But the coroner's report tells a conflicting tale. The autopsy state Sean died from acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis in association with ethanol use. In other words, alcohol poisoning. The coroner determines his death was an accident and after a lengthy investigation of the forensic analysis, sheriff's investigators agree. But despite all the evidence, Huffington Post crime reporter David Lohr says something doesn't add up. I took a look at the case, and just reading the police report alone, it, it just 
didn't make sense. Somebody, what jumped out at you? Here you had a, a, a guy who was deceased, found his apartment. It was, they were calling it accidental, but then, you know, you, you have where there's items were stolen from his apartment. But investigators found no compelling evidence of theft, even though the engagement ring Sean's ex fiance had recently returned to him was missing, as well as his wallet and credit cards. The detective has video from a Walmart and a convenience store showing three black males and a female uh, using his debit card. And surveillance images from the apartment show someone driving Sean's truck out of the front gate at 4.13 a.m. The truck was eventually found some two months later on a street nowhere near Sean's apartment. And also there were 2,500 miles on that vehicle um, that we're aware of. 2,500 miles in addition. In addition to what was on there. So your son turns up dead and someone other than your son is using his vehicle. Apparently so. But the report from the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office determined Sean's death was not a result of foul play and stated this investigation is closed. Bob is not convinced, so he hires a series of private investigators, including Jane Holmes, to help him piece the puzzle together. Nothing added up as an accidental death because you've got empty pills, his truck is missing, his wallet is missing, his card is being used at Walmart. This was not an accidental death. Results come back from that whiskey bottle the deputy found in the bathroom. The fingerprints are traced back to this woman. She goes by the name Desiree. Cops say he found her that Friday night on a dating app. This is a lady who had a you know, pretty long history uh, with law enforcement. She's not a choir girl. No, no, definitely not choir girl. Choir girls definitely don't dress like this. Investigators soon learn that Desiree is also known as Jasmine. Destiny and Mary Jane, but New Orleans cops know her by her legal name, Dominique Berry, and you probably won't see this official police photo on her dating profile. Mom always said never let a stranger in the house, but Sean Arthur apparently summoned one with a dating app. These apps, these dating apps, these hookup apps, and it goes terribly wrong. I mean, they're luring people in off of these dating apps. It's got to stop. Sean, who a co-worker says frequented various meetup sites, allowed a stranger, a prostitute, who calls herself Desiree, into his apartment. It would be the last night of his life. According to the coroner, Sean died from alcohol poisoning. Jefferson Parish Sheriff's deputy said there were no visible signs of trauma. No foul play was apparent, and after an exhaustive investigation, closed the case. Did you buy that? No, because Sean, like I said, Sean was not a heavy drinker at all. So Sean's father, Bob, a retired insurance investigator, mounted his own investigation and recruited a team of detectives to go over the official sheriff's reports. They also looked at uh, the last phone calls that were made by from Sean's phone, and those came back to uh, a lady named Jasmine, which they come to find out was actually an alias used by Dominique. Dominique Berry, a.k.a. Jasmine, a.k.a. Desiree. Yes, Desiree. She has many other aliases as well. New Orleans cops say she is a known prostitute with a long rap sheet. I mean, just right there. Mm -hmm. Very suspicious. Oh, yeah. Highly suspicious. Highly. Police knew of all her prior arrests. She had been arrested before for uh, robbing people, committing petty thefts. Huffington Post crime reporter David Lohr investigated the case. He says Sean's death unwittingly revealed what could be an alleged cross-country crime spree targeting men on dating apps, like the claims from this man in Sacramento, California. God, I was hurting real, for real, I almost died. We're calling him Hugh. He wants his identity kept secret. He claims he arranged for Dominique and her guys as Nurse Desiree to be a companion for his girlfriend. She was posing as a traveling nurse. So I said, hey, come on over, meet her. She's in medical field. Maybe you guys get along. Maybe it'll tune her up and make our relationship better. Hugh says Dominique arrived an hour before his girlfriend got home. He doesn't remember much after that. I think my second beer, she had already put something in it. And I don't know what, because I have no clue what happened after my second beer. Hugh says his girlfriend found him unconscious on the floor. He recalls waking up in the hospital the next day. 
they wanted to keep me in the hospital longer because they said, you know, you have been clinically dead for a minute and we want to look at your, you know, brain. He claims after that alleged encounter, his wallet is a little lighter. He filed a police report claiming Dominique stole his credit cards. She's brutal. She's a bad person. No remorse neither. Left me to die. Sacramento cops put out an arrest warrant for Desiree, AKA Dominique Berry. Where is she now? She is currently sitting in jail in Georgia. For what? She's facing charges of identity fraud. And then there's also a possession with intent to distribute marijuana. Dominique and her alleged pimp, Randy Schneck, are accused of scamming a 53-year-old man from outside Atlanta who contacted her on a meetup site. They both pleaded not guilty and deny all charges. According to her, he started getting her involved in prostitution and hooking her up with escort services in New Orleans and that she would basically make money for him. She was his bank. Private investigator Jane Holmes and her team went to the Cobb County Jail and spoke extensively with Dominique. It was basically an online dating scam. They would, they would attract people online who were looking for companionship or erotica or a date. And she opened up. She told me how they would lure their victims. Dominique describes in detail what she does when she meets a potential victim. My job is to uh, hang out with them, get them drunk. We drink half a bottle of beer. That's when you put the pill in because it won't fizz over. Then I'll do like a chug game or something like that. Once they start to get sleepy, I will let them know I'll text DP. Dominique says DP means drop pill. The message to Schneck that it was safe to enter the house. What was the biggest amount of cash you ever found on a mark? 13,000 cash. But in Sean's case, Dominique claims she barely remembers him. So I held up a picture of Sean Arthur and I said, do you recognize this man? And she just, she just looked through the glass at me and shook her head. Then I showed her some crime scene photos of him deceased in his apartment. And I said, this is Sean Arthur. And she went, she pulled back and she went, What's that got to do with me? I said, well, he died last February. Your fingerprints are in his apartment. And she goes, what does that have to do with me? Do you remember how you met him? Um, it had to be on a date site. Do you remember talking to Sean at all? Or? I just, I remember, I, I know I talked to him because I had to call him. I had to hear their voices before I go to their house. But one thing Dominique remembers clearly she said, I didn't know he died. I said, he did. Dominique says Sean was definitely still alive when she left the apartment. He was not deceased when I left. He was snoring very loudly when I left. And about that man in Sacramento who claims Dominique drugged and robbed him as her alias Desiree, she says it wasn't her. There's no way I would have, because one thing I don't do is like, if it's more than one person gonna be there, that's, that's I don't do that. Neither Dominique nor Randy have been charged with anything in connection with Sean's death. The Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office has never named them suspects or persons of interest as there is no evidence they took the missing items, his wallet, a ring, and a truck. If there was anything you could say to uh, Sean's parents, is there anything you would say to them? Tell them that I apologize and I want to make sure they get justice for their son no matter what I have to do. As a result of Bob Arthur's independent investigation, the Jefferson Parish coroner has changed the cause of death from an accident to undetermined. And so they held uh, what they call a consensus conference where, you know, the different medical examiners get together. They reviewed uh, everything that we had uncovered along with uh, the original autopsy and everything. And they decided to, to come back with undetermined. But Bob and Linda are determined to get to the bottom of what happened to their son. What's your message to, if you have one, to Dominique Berry and Randy Schneck? I want to see justice served and, and that, uh, you know, leave it up to a judge and a jury uh, to decide uh, what the outcome is.